Hello lovelies, in this video we're going to be looking at time of flight mass spectrometry and the associated calculations that go with it for your A-level chemistry. Now this isn't in every single A-level chemistry specification, only in some of them, so make sure this is a video that you actually need to watch. The best way you can ensure that you're actually watching the videos that you need to watch is by going and using the checklist over on my website. You can look at the video list, see if you need to know this, or you can download the checklist absolutely free and then keep it in your folder and keep it in your notes and keep track of things as you're going along. One type of mass spec is a time of flight mass spec. This can be used to identify different isotopes in a sample of an element. Here we have a typical type of graph that we might get at the end. Up the side here, we're going to have relative abundance, and this is a percentage, so remember all of the individual abundances will add up to 100. Along the bottom, we are going to get the MZ, or the mass charge ratio. So the number that you're going to see associated with each of these peaks is going to be the mass. For this example here, we're going to look at lead and we have four different isotopes of lead on this graph. All at slightly different abundances within the sample. To work out the average isotopic mass of lead, what you actually see on the periodic table, we take the percentage and times it by the mass. The percentage times by the mass. The percentage times by the mass. And then because all of the percentages add up to 100, we can divide them all by 100. Which will give us 207.03 as the average isotopic mass of lead. We can see this on the periodic table as the relative atomic mass or as a relative isotopic mass. Here we have a diagram representing our time of flight mass spec. This is under a vacuum. If there was any air present, and remember air is a mixture of lots of different things, it might collide with the ions and affect the results. We start with ionization. A sample of vaporized gas is injected and high energy electrons are fired at the sample. This knocks off an outer electron, leaving a positive ion. You can also have solvent ionization where the sample is dissolved in a volatile solvent injected via a fine needle. The tip of the needle is charged and the sample become positively charged. The solvent will then evaporate. The ions are then accelerated by an electric field and when they arrive at the end they'll be detected by a computer and the graph that we saw in the previous slide generated. All of the particles will have the same kinetic energy and hopefully you'll be familiar with this equation, but kinetic energy can be calculated by half mass velocity squared. The mass will be what determines the velocity. In our equation, m is mass, v is velocity, the half is just a number and the two, the squared, is a power, but remember it is only the velocity squared. Light particles will be fast and heavy particles will be slower. We now need another equation. We know that speed equals distance over time. We have our kinetic energy measured in joules, our time measured in seconds. Mass is measured in kilograms. Velocity is measured in meters per second. Distance is measured in meters and speed is measured in meters per second. 
Now the next bit we can do as slowly as you need to. We are going to rearrange the equation for kinetic energy. You see I've written Ke here. I'm moving the half over, so I'm timesing by two. Then I'm moving the mass over, so I'm dividing by mass. And then finally, we're going to square root the whole lot. So we just end up with the velocity. We can then combine this with our other equation, speed equals distance over time. But instead of saying speed, I'm going to change that, so I'm calling it velocity. Timesing by the time that is on the bottom, we get velocity times time equals distance. Dividing by velocity, we get time equals veloc distance divided by velocity. We now have velocity in two different places. We can combine these to say that it time that it takes for the particles to travel through the mass spectrometer is the distance travelled divided by the square root of two times the kinetic energy, and all particles have the same kinetic energy, divided by the mass. We can tidy that up a little bit to say that time equals distance multiplied by the square root of mass divided by two times the kinetic energy. Now we can take that equation that we worked out on the other side with t equal time, d equals distance, ke is kinetic energy, and m is mass, and we can use that to answer a question. An ion of carbon-12 with a mass of 1.99 times 10 to the minus 26 kilograms is accelerated upon a 0 0.90 metre long flight tube with a 1 times 10 to the minus 12 joules of kinetic energy. Determine the time taken for the ion to travel. Now with any long wordy equation that you see in chemistry, in biology, in maths, it doesn't matter what it is, the first thing I want you to do is to pull all of the numbers out. So I've taken all of the letters from the equation and I've just written them down over here. And now I'm going to go through the question and highlight all of the important bits and work out where they need to go. So t, time, that's the bit we're looking for. Distance is 0 .0, 0 0.90. Mass is 1.99 times 10 to the minus 26. And kinetic energy is 1.00 times 10 to the minus 12 joules. Now I have all of the information I need clearly in a box here. I don't have to worry about going back to the question to pull out the information when I need it. If there's anything that needs converted, this is a nice easy stage to do it at. Doing this makes it a lot easier to put the numbers into the equation. So for d we've got 0 0.90 square rooted, just replacing the letters with the appropriate numbers that we have pulled out. At this point, we need to switch over to our calculator and make sure that we are very careful when putting your numbers into the calculator. Do not jump steps, do not go too fast. Make sure you're writing the full numbers down, putting the full numbers into the calculator. If you press equals too early and write a number down, you will likely introduce a rounding error, which will be wrong. So the time taken is 8.977 times 10 to the minus 8 seconds to four significant figures. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.